Hello guys, welcome to a new video. Today we're in the Kaimana Mega Store, of course, of Kaimana, and we're gonna talk you through about how to check your kite gear so you'll be safe and ready for your next session. So we have three main subjects for this video. Uh, that will be the kite, the bar, and the board. So before we start, we recommend to do uh, this kind of check uh, once a year uh, minimum or when you're going on a big trip or a, a big downwinder, uh, you should get these tips also involved because you're safer on the water. So first off, we're checking the kite. Uh, why? Because the kite takes a little bit more time to check uh, if there is any leaking in the kite and you have to wait a couple of hours to check that. So that's why we start with it. It's not the part that has the most um, wear and tear, but it definitely needs some attention. So step one is to pump up your kite to the right pressure, which is mainly on the kite ridden itself. Around seven or eight PSI uh, is the most common. Uh, depends also on the size of your kite. Uh, close the clips on your one pump uh, system and detect a possible leak. If your kite is indeed leaking, you can use our tip to um, spray the kite in with some soapy water. And it will, uh, yeah, likely will be bubbling uh, around the leaking points. If your kite is indeed leaking or having some uh, leaking issues, you should definitely uh, bring it to a professional and let it check uh, and get it repaired. So moving on to step two is checking the canopy. Uh, first off, you hold your kite against the light to spo uh, spot small pinholes. Uh, pinholes are easy to fix at home. Uh, sometimes the kite manufacturer has got you a small repair kit. Then you can fix it at home. Uh, to do that is to get the, uh, an alcohol pad and clean your uh, canopy and get the patch on it on a flat surface. Uh, if the holes are bigger than small pinholes, you should definitely bring it to Kaipmana and let it repaired. After inspecting the canopy of your kite, we move on to the Dacron of your kite, which is also an important part to check. Uh, Dacron is on your uh, leading edge of your kite and on your struts. Uh, leading edge is always laying on the sand, so it's likely to catch some damage when there's a sharp stone or uh, shell on the beach. Uh, so check for uh, minor damage. So if there is a crazy bubble on your kite, you should definitely bring it to a kite shop um, and let it check because there is something wrong with the inside then or with the Dacron. Um, and in the future it may explode, so that's not what you want. So moving on to the next step, step three um, is checking your bridles. Uh, checking your bridles is especially important when you have uh, moving bridles with a um, pulley on it. Um, Bridles with a pulley uh, tend to wear out uh, faster than without, uh, so check them for extraordinary wear. Um, if there is uh, extraordinary wear on it, uh, you should get it replaced, uh, preferably on both sides because uh, otherwise the kite uh, tends to be pulling towards one side. So uh, check for wear. So to round up uh, the kite check, uh, we go on to step four. Uh, the last step of the kite is uh, to check your pigtails, of course. Um, it's a fairly easy process and you, don't, you just have to check if there's not any crazy wear on the loops and knots where you connect your kite to your bar. Um, if there is, uh, no worries, you can uh, let them make them custom by us or uh, you can just buy them from the brand which uh, your kite or bar is from. So moving on to the next subject uh, is the bar. Um, definitely the uh, most important when it comes to safety uh, because you have your quick release there and your safety line uh, etc. Before we start um, to tell you something about the bar and how to check it uh, please note that if you uh, are not experienced enough to uh, check your bar on your own or replace parts on your own please bring it to our shop. 
also in terms of safety, you don't want to have problems with your uh, bar or replace new parts afterwards. So the first thing uh, you need to do uh, when checking your bar is uh, rolling your lines off your bar and walk out your lines and check for possible knots on your lines. If you spot a knot on your lines, um, any of four or five of your lines, uh, you should uh, get it out as quickly as possible because your lines are tend to be 50% uh, less strong uh, than without a knot in it. So take it out as fast as possible. Um, sometimes you can do it by hand. Or uh, you can chew on it. Sounds a bit crazy, but um, it will work and the line will not get damaged. Little tip, uh, the most knots uh, which are possibly in your lines uh, are on the upper side of your lines where your uh, pigtails connect to your kite because there's a lot of movement when rolling up your lines. So moving on to step three is the quick release, checking the quick release, uh, which is very simple but yet uh, so important as all of the other steps. Uh, it's just checking uh, to get it easily opened and closed uh, and if the elastic bands are working inside of the shell of the quick release. If that's the case, you don't have to do anything. So if there is something wrong with your quick release, uh, don't hesitate and come over to Kaipmana for a professional opinion and we will get it prepared for you as soon as possible. So moving on to step two is checking your line lengths. It's very important to have the same amount of, of length on your four or five lines uh, because that is giving the uh, most performance out of your kite and bar. Um, if not, uh, you can have unwanted backstalling in lighter winds uh, and you won't have the same performance of your kite and bar. So to check the difference on your line length, uh, you need two persons and a screwdriver. So walk out your lines, connect them to the screwdriver, uh, get one uh, person on the screwdriver side and uh, another person on the bar side. Uh, make sure that your bar is on full power um, and your quick release is like this, fully into the bar, which makes the line lengths easy to check. If your lines are even on the video shown here, uh, then it's all right, you don't have to do anything. If they're uneven like this, you can uh, get a solution with pulling out your lines on the inside of your bar, your steering lines, and change them to another knot to make them longer or shorter. Depends on uh, the line lengths in your power lines or your steering lines. If there is difference in your line lengths and you cannot fix it with the nuts inside your bar, uh, just bring it over to Kaimana and we will help you out. So step four is checking your trim and depower power line. Uh, it's a very important step because all of your power is on your power line, um, as well as the upper side of your trim line. If there are any scratches or little damages on the line itself, you should get it replaced. Uh, sometimes it's a bit harder to spot um, when you have uh, a different brand uh, which has a PU coded line. Um, if it's a non-PU coded line, it's mainly easier to spot uh, wear and tear. So if you spot a minor damage or a big damage uh, on your trim line or deep power line itself, um, and there is a video online of it, you can repair it, repair it on your own. Uh, if that's not the case, uh, you can co contact us at Kaimana uh, and we can get it prepared for you as well or get you the right uh, replacement part. So a little note, if you have a click bar and want to check your D-Power on the inside because it's all integrated, uh, you can open up the sides uh, and check for sand and possible wear and tear on the line which is going uh, through your bar. Um, you can check that after a couple of sessions or half a year uh, which feels good for you. Uh, we should recommend to do it like in about 20 sessions. Uh, also, when you rinse your bar, uh, not all the sand will uh, go out of your bar. So get, it, get the sand out and check the line 
so you're safely underwater for your next session. So a little pro tip from us is when you're rolling up your bar with a PU coated uh, line, don't wrap it around your bar and make sure it's free hanging under the bar or it will be likely to be curved or damaged quicker. So don't be a cook and get the PU around your bar. Just get it under the bar and no twists or curves in it. So the next step, step five, is checking your pigtails. Uh, we got it already covered on the kite subject. Um, it's the same for the bar. Just check for any crazy damage on the loops and knots of your bar as shown here. Um, if there's not anything crazy, you can just kite with it and uh, go on to your next session. So the last step of checking your bar is checking your flagging line, which is step six. Um, it's um, sometimes harder when you have a PU coded uh, line on your bar, which oh, it's on the North Navigator, for example, or the Cabrina. The best thing you can do is just to pull the line out of it and check for any uh, turns in the line. Uh, you have to unturn the flagging line, of course, or any damage on the inside of your line. Uh, if that's all right, you're good to go. Otherwise, uh, it's likely that you have to get a replacement part. So the last subject that we do is checking your board. It's probably the easiest, uh, but also the most overlooked. Um, so firstly, on step one, is to check your hardware, all your hardware which is on your board. All the screws and everything, from your fins, onto your bindings, onto your grab handle. Make sure everything is perfectly tight so you don't lose any screws. So if you're planning to do uh, a long downwinder or a kite trip, just bring some extra, extra screws with you so you always have enough screws to fix your kite board or um, your binding or your fin. Uh, moving on to step two is checking the board for scratches, which sounds uh, pretty easy, but uh, sometimes it's also overlooked um, because very deep scratches um, can get into the core and water will soak up into the core and your board might break. So you definitely need to check if the stretches are not that deep, otherwise you need to fix it with epoxy or something else. So delamination is uh, common on some older boards uh, when the glue is not sticking to the board itself anymore. Uh, so check for that if you have some, uh, a bit of an older board. Um, it doesn't matter if it happens, you can uh, sometimes just glue it back together with the right uh, glue. But it's the same as with deep scratches. If there's water coming into the core, your board um, yeah, tends to bake a bit quicker. So uh, be fast with it if you spot it. So to round up uh, the steps of your board, uh, we're coming to step four, the last step, the Kaibmana Pro Tip, is to get a Kaibmana tracking sticker on your board. Uh, so you don't lose your board and you always find it back. So uh, thank you guys for watching. I uh, hope you enjoyed the video. Um, if you have any questions, don't hesitate, call or mail us. Um, also, when checking your gear, you can also bring it here and we can check uh, with you. Um, also, make sure to like and subscribe uh, and we'll see you on the next video. Ciao!